Alright, so for a change of pace from the Power Automate videos, I wanted to do a Power Apps video um, to talk about something that uh, basically show you something you might already know about, but uh, a lot of people I don't think really use to its full potential. And what I'm talking about is relative sizing and positioning of controls. And basically what that means is that in a Canvas app, you can very discreetly control the width and height and X and Y positions of each separate control, which is great because you can get it to be exactly where you want it to be. But in some cases that can be a problem because as you're, you know, especially if as your app is evolving, if you decide you need to add a control or you remove a control or you just want it to look a little bit better, you can spend hours or days even just specifically dragging things around, dragging controls around to make them, um, be exactly where you want. Whereas if you spend a little bit of time as you're developing and adding your controls to make the sizes relative and to make the positions relative to one another and to the container that is the screen or the uh, actual container, if it's a container, uh, or the form, then you can basically save yourself a lot of headache in that fine tuning process. So first off, uh, I'm in the process here of developing a component and this component size is 640 by 640 and the background of the component the fill is transparent and I added this button here button one actually let me just rename this <coughs> button background all right uh, I like using disabled buttons as backgrounds for things like components and templates and galleries etc just because it makes it look a little nicer you got the nice rounded edges and all that and you have some control over the background color etc anyway if I want to make sure so right now this is basically statically set to 640 by 640 but if I need to make my component larger for whatever reason let's say I make the height 800 why it keeps doing that but you'll see that the background is no longer the same height as the control um, or as the component so how do I fix that well what I want to do is make the size of this background button based on the size of the component and to do that I'm going to use this parent property so you you probably have seen parent dot whatever all over the place in power apps but in this case Basically, what I want to do is say inherit the parent width for the width and inherit the parent, not parnet, parent dot height for the height. So you'll see it automatically sized itself to fit. And if I later on change that component height back down to 640, it will automatically size the background image back down. So that's basically just keeping it the same size. But what if I want to make it make the size of something relative to the parent? So let's say I want this search text box to always be, you know, uh, I always want it to be centered in the parent. And I also want it to be exactly you know 40 pixels from the left side and 40 pixels from the right side how can I do that uh, well first off let's address the width now the width right now is just specified as 560 pixels if I click here I can type a formula in for that so in this case what I'm going to do is say is uh, parent dot width minus 80 so if I want it 40 from the left and 40 from the right then the parent width minus 80 is giving me the space to say that this is always going to be 40 from the left and 40 from the right and I could just set the X as 40 but I want to show you a little bit of math magic here so if I want this to always be centered and this is a formula I use all the time because it's very frequent uh, very frequently people will say well we want this to be sent you know, they want a button or a control or an image always to be centered in a space and this is how you can go about doing that uh, at least centered vertically not I'm sorry horizontally not vertically we'll talk about that later 
Uh, actually, it's the same idea for vertical, but we won't go into that here. So anyway, if I want to center this horizontally, basically what I need to do is say parent dot width divided by two minus self dot width. So instead of the parent's width, the width of the control itself, self dot width divided by two. So basically, this will now always be the x position is going to be the width of the parent divided by two minus the width of the control itself divided by two. And I've set the width of the control to always be 80 pixels smaller than the width of the container. So again, if I were to increase the width of my component here to 690, you'll see the text box enlarged to go with it. It might not even be that easy to see because of how I've, uh, you know, I didn't make it that big of a difference, but if I were to make this, you know, a thousand, it's clearly fitting that. So now let's put it back to 640. So there we go. So now as we adjust the size of the container, this is automatically gonna size. Now, if you, if you notice there, when I bump this up to say 800, this X, which is a control, it's a button I, an icon I added to clear this search box, uh, it's no longer anchored at the right side of that box. Let's talk about how we can do that. Again, using a little bit of math. Uh, now, first off, I want it to always be the same height and the same Y position as this search box. So for the Y position, I'm going to say ti search text dot y. So whatever the y is of that search box or the text box, that's going to be the y position of that icon. Now the height is going to be ti search text dot height. Okay, so now it's always going to be the same height. Now how do I anchor it at the right side of it? Now, this is a, can be a little confusing because we can control, you know, basically we can anchor the, the Y position is going to be this top border and the X position is going to be the left-hand border, but I can't say I want to lock that right-hand border. So we need to use a combination of things we've already learned, which is positioning it relative to and doing a little bit of math. So let's go into the X. So we want to position it at the right edge so the right side of the X control that icon lines up with the right side of our search box so let's do ti search text dot X plus ti search text dot width uh, it's getting close now it's overhanging on the right hand side minus self dot with bingo so now as we adjust the size of our component, if I bring it from 800, um, let's say I go from 800 to 1200. That X is still gonna be on the right hand. It's gonna be anchored there. Or if I drop it back down to 640, still anchored there. So that is gonna say, now here's the really fun thing. Uh, as I move this control, you'll see that the X catches up to it. And this also kind of highlights one of the problems because I, I set the X control on this before with a formula. Once I dragged it away from that, that formula kind of got blown away because once you explicitly drag something somewhere, Power Apps just erases that formula and overwrites it with wherever you dropped the thing. Sometimes you can get away with undoing a few times um, or you know once or twice to get it to yep so that just by undoing I was able to, to reset the width to that formula there we go all right it's now a little more sophisticated um, if we imagine that we divide the screen into four parts here so we've got a line down the middle and then we've got a line down the middle of this side and a line down the middle of this side and I want these buttons these are buttons by the way so if I highlight if I hit the uh, 
Alt key, you can see that that is actually a button. If I want those to be centered on the center line of each of those halves, how can I do that? Well, that involves a, a little, little bit more math. So first I'm going to start with this accept button. And to get it positioned in the center of the left hand side, uh, I'm going to go to the X property. And I'm going to say parent dot width divided by two. Actually, I'm sorry, divided by four, because that's going to get us the one quarter distance across it. Minus self dot width divided by two. So that's going to basically center it on that one quarter grid line, that imaginary grid line we've got there. Uh, now the same thing over here, similar rather, not the same, but if I want to set the X of this so it's centered on the right hand in the right half, uh, I just need a little bit different uh, formula here. So in this case it's going to be parent, technically it's that the quarter line or that three quarter line is three quarters of the width, which is to say that it is the width times 0.75. So parent dot width times 0.75 minus self dot width divided by two. So now it is centered in there. And again, just to demonstrate the point, if I adjust the size of my container, my component rather to 800, those are still gonna stay in those relative positions to the parent. So I can change the size of things and move other things around without those breaking. Uh, now, a couple other things I often do is I want this to always be maybe 20 pixels below the search box. So I'll set the Y to be TI search text dot Y plus TI search text dot height plus whatever you want that gap to be. So I'm going to say 20 pixels. And now I always want this cancel button to be the same height at, or the, I'm sorry, the same Y position as that accept button. So I'm going to go to the cancel button and go to the Y and just set that to button accept dot Y. So now I've basically made the this this is relative to this and the parent and this is relative to this so if I move this search box down you'll see everything else follows it and again because I just dragged it I undid that formula so I can basically go back to that uh, but there you go so that is basically what I want to talk about that just using relative formulas using the parent property and the self property uh, or, or I should say the parent method I'm not sure and the self method and those widths heights X's Y's and a little bit of math and you can kind of build your controls in a way that the layout can be very easily tweaked without breaking things and without driving you mad by you know manually dragging or setting the X and Y coordinates or setting the pixel sizes. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Um, otherwise, have a great day.